G'day ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? Scott at E49 here with you once again for another installment in the Warhammer 40,000 for the new guy series. Now in this video, we're gonna keep on looking at my current favorite faction to play in Warhammer 40,000 and that is the Death Watch. And today's video, we're gonna be specifically diving into the pros and cons of playing Death Watch Space Marines. But before we go any further, ladies and gentlemen, I thank everyone that has joined the channel as of late and if you haven't subscribed on the channel as of yet feel free if you are enjoying the content to hit that sub button turn on that notification bell so you're able to be advised as to when i am releasing new content but ladies and gentlemen let's jump into it Alrighty, everyone so as i have said there's going to be some pros and some cons to playing Death Watch Space Marines. And as per usual, when I do look at pros and cons, I always look at three for each. So we're gonna start off with the pros. And the first pro is kill teams. Now, I absolutely love making use of Death Watch kill teams and they are one of the best Death Watch rules, hands down, that they have to make use of. Now, kill teams are a specific troop unit that allow you to take a starting unit of five models with the option of adding a variety of different models to that unit as well. Very different to some of the other factions within the game. Now, there are four different types of kill teams to choose from, and we will cover some more of their rules in the next video when we talk about their core rules. So the first kill team is the Proteus kill team. Now, this one starts off with five standard firstborn Death Watch veterans, and then you can take up to an additional five models of either Death Watch veterans, Vanguard veterans, Terminators, or Bikes. Now, that's a pretty staple kill team, in my current Death Watch army list, and I love it because it focuses on firstborn space marines, being able to make use of some of the core rules, and really be able to get some mobility in there with the Vanguard Vets and Bikes. The second one is the Fortis Kill Team. Now, this is the first of three Primaris Space Marine focused ones, and this is focused on the standard Primaris Marines. So to start with, you can start off with five intercessors and take up an additional five models of either regular intercessors, assault intercessors, outriders, or hell blasters. So again, you're able to get that mobility in there with the, the outriders, but also you can take some heavier firepower with the hell blasters, or be a bit more split focused and take five intercessors, five assault intercessors, and do a bit of shooting and close combat within the one unit if you don't combat squad them. The next one is the Indomina Kill Team. Now this focuses on Gravis Armor Primary Space Marines where it starts off with five heavy intercessors and you can take up to an additional five models of either heavy intercessors, aggressors, inceptors, or eradicators. So again, they've got the inceptors in there for mobility with the jump packs, but also you're able to move things around quite quickly and you know, you're able to unleash a lot of firepower with the aggressors and the eradicators as well. Now there is a fourth kill team, which is the Spectrus kill team. Now this one is focused on Phobos Space Marine. So it starts off with five infiltrators in the base unit, and then you can pick another five uh, models from either infiltrators, incursors, reavers, or eliminators to go within this unit. So again, it's probably one of the only ways that you can get a lot more eliminators out of a unit rather than just going, oh, I'm gonna take three in a unit. You can actually take up to five here. You can do some stuff there with the helix add up from infiltrators. You can add in some reavers for some more shock and awe style stuff. There's a lot of utility you can use with that one as well. Now, these are also a very strong part of the next pro for the Death Watch as well, which the second pro for them is their tactical flexibility. Now, the Death Watch, in my opinion, are the most tactically flexible Space Marine sub-faction in the game. The kill teams that we just talked about allow you to take a significant amount of flexibility and utility within them, whether it's firepower, close combat power, mobility, toughness, even with those Gravis focused kill team as well. And you're able to do so really well at base points for a lot of those models. Now, another thing is that you're able to actually choose when your combat doctrines are active, which we'll also cover more of in the core rules video for the Death Watch, which is the next video coming up as well. Now, between all of these, you can craft units and kill teams to be highly efficient in fulfilling particular roles, whether it's being 
close quarters combat or whether that's being long range firepower with some of the heavier weapons or being close range firepower with really strong anti-infantry light anti-vehicle weapons or a mix of both close range weapons and close combat weapons it's really up to you how you craft your units to be able to make the most of them when creating your death watch army lists and the third pro of the Death Watch is the Death Watch benefit firstborn space marines more than they benefit primary space marines. Now, several of the benefits and even the pros of the Death Watch favor regular slash firstborn marines as they're more commonly known in a Death Watch army more so than they do for primary space marines at this point in time. Now, this is from special issue ammunition to unit weapon options to transport options the firstborn have so much more in terms of the options that they can choose from and make use of. Now, some of these we'll even cover more in depth in the next video in this series of the Death Watch as well. Now, we get into the three cons of playing with the Death Watch. And the first one is unit restrictions. Now, unfortunately, the Death Watch within the Space Marine Codex are considered to be one of the chapters that are non-Codex compliant chapters. Now, what this means is that there are several units that they actually don't have access to due to the way that they are structured. And these units are the Assault Squad, the Attack Bike Squad, the Bike Squad, the Devastators, the Stone Guard Veteran Squad, the Tactical Squad, and Scouts. This means that you'll need to use a lot of other units to fulfill the roles that these units may fulfill within an army, say you may have to load up on heavy weapons in your Death Watch Veteran Squad or taking a Death Watch Veteran Squad kitted out with heavy weapons specifically to fill the role of what a Devastator Squad would do. For an example, this also leads into the next con that the Death Watch have as well. Con number two is the limited infantry based heavy weapons. Now, due to not being able to take several infantry units that I've just previously mentioned, this actually limits their ability to take a lot of heavy weapons and a lot of heavier firepower weapons, which means you've got fewer options to choose from for that role. The Death Watch veterans and the Terminators can take heavy weapons, however, the veterans can't take the heavier weapons, such as multi melters, laser cannons, and plasma cannons. That, you know, multi and the laser cannons are really crucial in the current state of the game. So, not being able to take them really does hurt the Death Watch to a certain extent. Now, you can still field some of these weapons, however, you'll need to look at different infantry units or vehicles to be able to take them in your Death Watch army list in to take them for the anti vehicle weaponry, such as taking venerable dreadnoughts to take a twin link laser cannon on, or taking a, you know, Land Raider that's got two twin LAS cannons. There's a lot of different vehicles out there that you can take those on, or you could also dip into different heavy weapons to try and get the job done. For example, the missile launcher to be able to do stuff to infantry and heavier targets as well. Now, the third con for the Death Watch is they have an increased points cost. For Death Watch veterans, as they are considered veterans, their base points cost is higher than that of, say, a Tactical Marine or Devastator Marines, more along the lines of what a Vanguard or a Stern Guard veteran would cost, for example. However, they are also equipped base as having a bolt gun and a power sword, which means you're also needing to pay the points for that power sword at base if you don't swap it out with, say, a chain sword or another weapon. The fact that they can take a lot of weaponry individually can drive up the points of units overall, meaning that you need to spend be cautious around what you're equipping your models with, but also what you're spending per unit, which means the more you spend per unit, the less units you can have in your army and the less models you'll have to be able to use and make use of to score objectives, to score those points and to trade with your opponent to do things within the game as well. So bear that in mind when you're assembling, writing lists and playing your games. But Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the three pros and the three cons of playing Death Watch Space Marines. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed 
this video, we'll be talking about the pros and cons of the Death Watch feature, and I hope that I've given you a nice, clear and succinct understanding of what the top three pros and the top three cons are for them. If there is anything that you agree with or you disagree with as a fellow Death Watch player, feel free to let me know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, so you can continue to be notified as to when we are releasing more Death Watch focused content on the channel as well. And if you want to engage in more live style of discussion and have more conversation about this topic or any other topic that I cover on the channel, feel free to come and find me when I'm live over on Twitch where I stream on Tuesday and Friday nights and Saturday afternoons Australian Eastern Standard Time. And we can have that discussion whilst I'm doing a hobby session or a live game as well. Maybe not whilst I'm at an event doing live tournament coverage, but we might be able to have that chat in chat itself. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.